Now, so far we've just been playing audio through the audio clip of an audio source playing on a wake. But of course, what we more often want to do is programmatically trigger when sounds play in code. And we can do that through the methods of audio source, including play, pause, unpause, and stop, which are pretty self-explanatory. But there's also play delayed, where you specify uh, time in seconds to wait before starting the sound, and play one shot. The regular play method plays the clip specified in the audio clip property of the audio source, whereas with play one shot, you can just specify any clip to play through that source. And you can also specify a volume scale for that, for that clip. So in fact, with play one shot, you can have multiple sounds playing simultaneously through one audio source. If we have multiple sounds going and we hit pause, they all get paused and will all be resumed with unpause. And if you call stop, all sounds currently playing through an audio source get stopped. There's also the static method play a clip at point where you don't even have to have an audio source to play an audio clip. It'll just play at that position in space as specified here. Though understand with this method, because there's no actual audio source, you can't feed the output to a mixer. You can't specify its pitch or any of the spatialization properties. So it's a much more limited way of playing a, a sound. Though in some cases, that's all you need. So now looking back at our script, we have two clip properties, clip one and clip two, and an audio source property. And so on our object, which has an instance of this audio demo script, we hook up clip one and clip two with two audio assets and we hook up the source to be audio cube gray. That's this gray cube in the scene, which has its own audio source. So now we'll have two audio sources in the game, the red one and the gray one. So when this instance of audio demo is created, Unity will take these sound files and create audio clips, which it'll set to clip one and clip two, and it'll take the, the audio source of that game object and set it to this source property. And then in our update, when the user hits alpha one, We'll use play one shot to play clip one on source. When they hit alpha two, it plays clip two on the, the source, the gray box. When they hit Z, it invokes the play method on the source. X will be pause, C will be unpause, and V will be stop. So now if we go back and play the game, we have Tinny Prokofiev coming out of the red cube, come over to the gray cube, and if I hit one, we get gongs. I can hit it multiple times and it's just overlapping gong sounds. You can't tell super, super well, but they're overlapping. I'm gonna hit V to stop all those. And if I hit Z to play, well, the clip associated with this gray cube is, let's see, which one, what did we set that to be? We set that to be Beethoven. Oh, here, audio source, yeah, it's this Beethoven. I'm gonna hit V to stop. And if I hit two, clip two was set to be a different audio clip, it's this reggae music. I'll get further back so it's not so loud. If I hit X, it pauses. Z will unpause. If I do some gongs and pause and resume, notice the, the gong sounds, everything paused. Everything coming out of the audio source paused and then it resumed. And likewise, if I bunch of gongs and hit V, they'll all stop together. So stopping stops everything being emitted through the source, all the clips playing. Yeah, and also understand if I hit Z to play, it plays the Beethoven. If I hit it again, it effectively jumps back. So for the one audio clip, clip, repeatedly playing sets it back to the beginning. But that's not the case if I do play one shot. So if I hit two here, I'm gonna stop, and hit two multiple times. So first once, and then again, and it's the same clip overlapping. They're, they're both playing simultaneously. Very annoyingly, so I'm gonna stop. Okay, yeah, so that one special audio clip properties, its behavior is a little different in regards to how play works. So to be clear that for any audio source, you don't really have to set the audio clip to anything. You can just leave it to none and you can just use the audio source to play with play one shot instead of ever using the play method. And in some cases that's appropriate because maybe you have uh, many sounds coming out of one position in space. Though, if you want to independently control various properties of how the sounds are played, you're going to need multiple audio sources. And do understand that you can give multiple audio sources to just any one game object. So you can have as many audio sources on this one game object as you like. And that way you can configure them independently so they have different settings and you'll have more control that way.
Also understand that loading audio clips in this way, this is the easy way to do it for sure. And it's probably what's most commonly done. But sometimes you wanna have control over how exactly the audio is loaded because maybe you wanna manipulate it in some way. And sometimes you want to actually procedurally generate audio data rather than loading it from any file. So in that case, there is a way to manually create audio clips. There's no public audio clip constructor, so you can't use new to create audio clips, but there's a static create method which you use. And then I won't go into the details, but there's a way of then loading audio data to create your audio clips. The way we did it though is of course much more convenient because uh, doing it this way, Unity will load the audio asset and make an audio clip for us. So now I've removed all the mixers, but there's another way of applying effects to your audio sources. You can add a filter component. Here, I'll do a distortion filter uh, on this uh, red cube. And because it has an audio source, this audio filter applies to that audio source when it plays sound. Let's see, let me set distortion level something more noticeable. Um, 0.8 there, let's see. So now if we play the game. Yeah, it sounds pretty distorted to me. So there's a distorted Prokofiev. And understand you can also apply these filters to the, the audio listener game object, and it'll affect everything uh, that reaches that audio listener. So here, if I add a echo filter, let's see, that should add a pretty decent echo. Let's here. Yeah, it's pretty echoey. Though understand that these filters don't do anything we can't do with a mixer. Mixers are actually just a more general and flexible version of accomplishing the same thing. And in fact, uh, you'll notice that the list of filters is relatively limited. There were more effects for mixer groups than there are filter components because filter components are actually the old mechanism. Uh, mixers and mixer effects are the, the new mechanism, the more recent thing. So they're, they're generally what you would prefer in a modern game. Though sometimes, arguably, these filters are just more convenient to use. So maybe you'll still use filters, but uh, mixers really are the more modern mechanism. Lastly, let's add here an audio reverb zone. Create a game object with an audio reverb zone component. And it doesn't show up particularly well here, but if we zoom out, we'll see there's a radius. There's this light blue outline of two spheres. Uh, this is showing the interior radius, the min distance radius. This is the max distance radius. And the idea is that, um, here, let me actually shrink these down so it's a more noticeable effect there. I'll try and position that between the boxes. Yeah, that's about right. There we go. And we'll shrink that max distance a bit too so we start outside of it. So th this is defining a, a bounding sphere in which these reverb effects start to apply when the audio listener enters these spheres. And within the min distance sphere, it's the full effect. Whereas if we're in the outer sphere, but not the inner sphere, then it's, a, um, it's partially applied. When we enter the max distance radius, that's when the effect kicks in. And the closer we get to the min distance radius, uh, the more pronounced the effect. So we have various different reverb presets and we want the effect to be quite noticeable. So I'm gonna make it underwater. That one's quite noticeable. Uh, though we have to do one more thing here for our two audio sources. Uh, the reverb zone mix. If it's set down to zero, then reverb zone has no effect. So we obviously want that to be uh, full effect. Actually, I don't know why it goes beyond one, but anyway, it does. So I'll make it one. Same thing here. I'll make this one. And now we'll play the game. We're starting outside the reverb zone, but I'll enter. Well, I can definitely hear it in my footsteps and I can kind of hear it in the Prokofiev. Yeah, it, it's kind of there. It's more noticeable with the lower frequencies that occasionally kick in. Let me try the gong. Yeah, that sounds pretty underwater to me. Here, I'll stop that and then... Yeah, the reggae is pretty underwater too. So, because our audio listener is inside that reverb zone, that's why we're hearing that effect applied to all the the sounds that reach our listener, or at least the ones where the reverb zone mix is non-zero. Now, it may have occurred to you that these reverb zones are spherical, but what if you want to have a reverb area which is not a sphere? Like say, if you have a rectangular room, if I enter the room, the reverb should kick in, but it shouldn't reverb outside that bounded space, that rectangle. So 
It's a little awkward if you try and solve this problem using reverb zones. You can kind of hack around it by using triggers to enable and disable your reverb zones, but it's a hacky solution. I think the best solution is, well, in audio mixers, we have an SFX reverb effect, which has all the same effects we can apply. So we can apply any kind of reverb through audio mixers that we can do with reverb zones. And so rather than using reverb zones at all, we just have trigger colliders, which when our audio listener enters those trigger colliders, the trigger will enable these reverb effects on our mixer. So we can get reverb without reverb zones entirely. And if you really want to do this properly, you would have a transition threshold where you have the interior trigger space, but then a trigger threshold, like when you go through the door, such that you, you would do the, the calculation of, well, how close am I to the reverb zone? And within a certain distance, it'll kick in some reverb until eventually hitting the full reverb when you enter the, the full trigger zone. So again, we actually really don't need reverb zones. We can get the same effect using mixers and trigger colliders. And that generally, I'd say, is actually the, the proper solution in most cases because the, the common case where you want reverb is within rooms, and rooms are usually rectangular. So it's just a, a lot less clumsy if you can define precise spaces rather than trying to approximate with spheres, which can get pretty clumsy quite fast.